Good morning and welcome. My name is Nathan Sorensen. I am the Strategic Information Technology Procurement Officer for the Midwestern Higher Education Compact. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar on MEX contract with Corel and featuring Corel Draw Graphic Suite. Before turning the controls over to our guests, presenters from Corel, I'd like to briefly introduce the Midwestern Higher Education Compact to you and how we arrived at this contract with Corel and the informational resources available to you regarding the contract. To help you understand our contracting authority and why the Midwestern Higher Education Compact is involved with these technology contracts, it is best to have a better understanding about our organization. We are an interstate compact charged with advancing Midwestern higher education through interstate cooperation and resource sharing. The Midwestern Higher Education Compact is one of four regional compacts in, in the United States, and each have their own niche for addressing issues and advocating for higher education. Often referred to as MEC, our niche was rooted in cost savings programs created by and supported by stakeholders from the 12 Midwestern states. MEC has agreements in place to extend our technology cost savings program to the Southern Regional Education Board, SREB, and to the Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education, which currently we have no agreement with the New England Board of Higher Education. And as the map shows, there are three states not covered by any of the compacts, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. What a compact is, is really a contract amongst the states. This legislation that was passed in each state makes us an instrumentality of state government in the 12 Midwestern states. Similarly, the other compacts have been statutorily created. What makes the compact unique to the higher education community is its broad contracting authority created in each of its member states. The compact is not a group purchasing organization. The compact is a means for stakeholders in the 12 member states to collaborate on identifying regional issues and committing resources to leverage the solution through the compact statutory authority. We are very selective in the types of contracts that we pursue. We try to identify those areas that we can bring value in and as a result will be something that an individual institution may not be able to replicate on its own. But because we are working together across state lines, regionally and now nationally, we can bring value that wouldn't have otherwise been there. How did we arrive with a contract with Corel? During the annual meeting of Midwestern Higher Education, CIOs, technical experts, and IT procurement professionals in February of 2013, many individuals expressed the need to look for creative software alternatives and licensing options to meet the needs of faculty, students, and staff. A small work group of regional representatives was formed, and in July 2013, we announced a request for proposals for creative software for design, print, media, and web. The RFP Selection Committee evaluated four responses and chose two finalists for oral presentations and product demonstrations. Ultimately, the committee's competitively sourced RFP resulted in the selection of Corel in December of 2013 as the solution for creative software. While all of our contracts are negotiated on behalf of higher education, when the opportunity presents itself, the compact negotiates to extend the contracts to K-12, cities, state, and local governments, which may include different price schedules. Our MEC Tech website 
features a couple of easy ways you may access our contracts. When accessing the site mechtech.org, use the toolbar at the top to select a category such as computer, hardware, software, or printers. Or you may go directly to the contract section by clicking the contracts link in the upper right hand corner. It's also important to note that we insert recent news about contracts, RFPs, as well as upcoming regional and national events. Please also visit the section on getting the most value from MEC contracts to receive some valuable tips on purchasing products and services through this contract vehicle. For details regarding the Corel contract, select software from the top toolbar and then from the drop down menu at the left or click the Corel logo to go to the Corel contract page. Once on the Corel page, you will be able to find contract highlights, contract terms, and specific Corel contact information. Notice on the right hand side, under contract eligibility, you will find clickable links for each of the eligible parties. By clicking on one of these links, visitors will arrive at the Corel website specifically tailored for MEC and its sister compacts SREB and WICHI. The Corel website has additional contact information for purchasing Corel products, including their products, an outline of their Corel education licensing program, price lists, frequently asked questions, and more. Clicking on the contracts link in the upper right hand corner, you will find the ability to download contracts and their amendments and or addendums. Plus the specific links to state statutes for the MEC region are visible on the right hand side of the page. Also, please don't hesitate to contact our staff if you have any questions. You will see my contact information as well as our legal counsel should you have any questions for Rob. So now for our today's special presenter, Gerard Molitor, Senior Director of Product Management at Corel. But first, I'd like to turn over the floor to Brian Hanlon, North American Licensing Manager from Corel. Brian, will you please introduce yourself, Corel, and your colleague, Gerard? Yeah, great. Thanks very much, Nathan. So um, as Nathan mentioned, my name is Brian Hanlon. I'm the North American Licensing Manager for Corel Corporation. Really what I wanted to do, just take a couple minutes of your time just to give you really a Corel snapshot um, in case some of you aren't aware of who Corel is today. And then leave you with some key messages that I want to get across to you uh, in the next couple minutes. So first off, what I will say, some of the th key things that Corel is trying to do right now, we're trying to be a very flexible organization. And I know you might hear that quite a bit, but basically what that means is we don't lock you into multi-year commitments. Specifically for education, what we try to uh, the key message we try to get across is you buy what you need when you need it. Above and beyond that, the flexibility is all yours. Second to that, we've worked very hard with MEC to try to arrive at some very aggressive price points that will make this offer very attractive and a uh, attractive option for the institutions within MEC and the other two compacts, SREB and WICHE. Lastly, the one thing I did want to touch on is our product portfolio. I think many people would not be aware, many of our customers are not aware that uh, over the course of the past 10 years, Corel has been in acquisition mode and we've acquired many companies over that time such as Roxio, Pinnacle, WinZip, Ulead, uh, InterVideo, and a few more. And what this has led to is now we have a very large and loyal uh, install base of 150 million customers in over 150 countries. So when I take a look at the product portfolio, 
very vast offering right now. We look at products like Corel Draw that Gerard is going to uh, go into in a few minutes, Corel Painter, uh, WordPerfect, WinZip, uh, Roxio Creator, Pinnacle Studio, Video Studio. So what this all basically means is, hey, very broad. Uh, we pretty much have products for everybody. But the three main silos that we see over and over again within, within academic are photo, video, and graphics. This conversation tends to come up quite a bit. So those three key messages, pricing, uh, product offering, and uh, flexibility uh, have allowed us to have customers in every state and province in North America at this point. Um, and it goes really back to those three things. We're very flexible. We try to be, we've tried to be, uh, offer very aggressive price points with MEC and the world-class software in those three main silos. So I really wanted to get those key messages uh, across to you. I don't want to take up any more of your time because Gerard is really going to uh, expand on that and go into Corel Draw and really show some of the, uh, the great product that him and his team have developed. Over to you, Gerard. Thank you very much, uh, Brian. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure today to give you an overview of uh, Corel Draw Graphics Suite. And what I want to do is instead of, of going through, through slides, and, and we're going to give this a try, is actually show you the application itself directly. So uh, I hopefully we won't have too much lag today to go through that, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on the, on the quality. We're actually very excited here at Corel uh, not only to be able to, to show you and, and offer you a Corel Draw Graphics Suite, but also make sure that we can show you today the brand new version that we just announced at the end of last week, Corel Draw Graphics Suite X7. I don't want to spend too much time today into the specifics of the new feature, but much more give you an overview about the Corel Draw Graphics Suite product offering, and also more importantly, how you can very quickly come up to speed and get all the information you need to be able to propose and provide the curriculum and information you need for your students. Corel Draw Graphics Suite uh, is today used by 12 million users worldwide. It's uh, it's the uh, a leading, it's one of the leading graphics suites uh, in the world. Uh, we really have a complete solution for professionals and occasional users alike. Everything uh, needed for graphics professionals when they do their design, flyers, layouts, as well as a lot of production-oriented industries, sign makers, engravers, etc. Those types of users are very important and are driving the needs of the, and the development of CorelDRAW. But we also want to make sure that our product is fantastically designed for people who use graphic software on a casual basis and not, are not professionals, who want to produce very high quality graphics and uh, visual communication, but not necessarily use the software all day long. And this is very important in all our design to make the tool as easy as possible to use for all of you. Throughout the user workflow for Corel Draw Graphics Suite, we really look at what our users do, and we spend a lot of time in the development cycle for Corel Draw Graphics Suite in focusing on how our users work with the application, make sure that we can streamline your workflow and our users' workflow overall. Quite often, our users will start from previous projects, from documents, from their students or their customers, from clip arts, from photos, from documents they find on the Internet, uh, or sometimes also from a blank page. They'll do all the design in Corel Draw Graphics Suite and then prepare that design for output and have the capability from within the application directly to output to any medium, be it web with PDF, EPS, PNG, CGM, SVG, etc. support, printing either on a local printer or on a wide format printer, and as well as many different outputs such as direct-to-garment, embroidery, cutters, engravers, digital signage, you name it, we can really go from CorelDRAW to any medium that takes graphics format. And this is a very important thing for us. We always are keen on really understanding our users, working very closely with our users to deliver the next versions of our product. Uh, here are just a few examples to show you the quality and the depth of what can be done with CorelDRAW Graphics Suite. Here's an example of a, of a T-shirt printing, a T-shirt design, all designed in CorelDRAW and then printed to a T-shirt. You can do uh, projects uh, at school or for companies where you can really create all the graphics for the web pages, the Facebook pages, the different flyers, the brochures, etc., very quickly. 
in a more professional aspect, but some of you have, might have departments where you teach signage uh, at, at schools, for example, uh, you can create car wraps and signs and digital signs, et cetera, directly all the graphics with CorelDRAW and go to production after that. Or finally, uh, just a more traditional fine art type classes. Uh, you can do that here as well with CorelDRAW, in this case with vector fine art, but you also have full support for bitmap painting and things like that directly in CorelDRAW graphics. So, you know, I'll show you a few more of those, a few more of those shortly. So without further ado, let me go a little bit more into CorelDRAW Graphics Suite, and, uh, and I'll try to answer questions as they come in. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you type them uh, in the question box uh, within the, the webinar interface, uh, we'll try to answer them as they come in. Uh, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll go forward and then have a quick brief check if there's any, any questions at, at the end of every page. So what I will show you today is very quickly what is included in CorelDRAW Graphics Suite and then actually show you a little bit the power of the product itself and some of the functionality. CorelDRAW Graphics Suite includes numerous applications within the suite. First and foremost, CorelDRAW, which is a vector editing and page layout application. With CorelDRAW, you can create not only the fine art vector graphics you just saw, but you can also create flyers, brochures, uh, and, uh, and project reports uh, directly with CorelDRAW Graphics Suite. We support documents of up to 999 pages, so it gives you really a depth of, of, ca of capabilities that you can go very far with it without needing a dedicated desktop publishing application to create a, a project report, a field trip report, et cetera, et cetera. Corel Photo Paint is also included in the suite and enables you to uh, very quickly uh, edit uh, and uh, retouch photos uh, and we have a full-blown, it's a very advanced and professional photo editing application, and I'll show it to you in a few minutes. Um, we also include a tool called PowerTrace. PowerTrace enables you to take a bitmap, a photo, or a, a, a bitmap, a JPEG, or PNG, or GIF that you, you find, for example, on the Internet, uh, and then trace it, convert it into vectors so that you can really create high-resolution versions of those to be used in your design. That feature is actually embedded directly into CorelDRAW. We also include Corel Connect, which is an application that enables you to, to find, uh, browse and find the content that you want to use with Corel uh, Draw Graphics Suite. Content can be either uh, vector, bitmaps, uh, fonts, uh, clip art, templates, etc. Uh, Corel Connect uh, provides, and Corel Draw provides you with over 10,000 clip arts out of the box, over 2,000 high resolution stock photos, over 1,000 fonts. Uh, over 800 um, frames, over 350 design templates, and a lot of, of things that get you ready to go. All this available through Corel Connect. On top of that, Corel Connect also enables you to search online sources such as Flickr, and we go through the Creative Commons licensed uh, content on Flickr, for example, uh, as well as uh, stock, pro, stock photo providers like iStock and Photolia. Included in the Corel Draw Graphics Suite uh, X7 is also Corel Website Creator, an advanced uh, tool that enables you to create websites without any HTML coding knowledge requirements. Uh, quite often we see this complexity of creating websites and the need of knowing HTML coding and makes it very complex. Here it's a, a template-driven and then fully drag-and-drop driven interface that enables you to create web pages and websites very quickly and very easily incorporating images that you've created in CorelDRAW or PhotoPaint with a simple drag and drop or an import. Corel Capture enables to do screen captures uh, and very quickly also capture what you see there from a web page and incorporate that in your CorelDRAW documents but also in your Office Productivity documents directly. And that's very important for us as well to be compatible with Microsoft Office, uh, for example. In addition to that, a lot more, but one uh, that I wanted to highlight as well is over five hours of training videos that are included directly with the product. Uh, we include a lot of content and training so that people who are new to CorelDRAW can come up to speed very quickly, and those who are experienced with CorelDRAW can get even more advanced tips and techniques with the tools available. So CorelDRAW Graphics Suite, uh, as I said, was the new version X7 was just announced last week. And I wanted to show you a little bit the new application here in CorelDRAW itself. As you can see so far, I've actually used the multi-page functionality of CorelDRAW Graphics Suite, 
uh, as I was working on it. This is a 24-page document. So you can really create not only um, flyers and brochures uh, with handling the page numbering, even in odd pages and all those types of things, but you can even create full-size screen presentations, export this to PDF, etc. The user interface uh, is, is, is very streamlined and simplified, so we have a lot of information available at fingertips. The first time you'll launch the application, you will see what we call the welcome screen. And the first question we'll ask our users uh, when they launch Corel Draw Graphics Suite is what type of workspace they want to use. We have a light workspace, so if somebody is new at using the application and doesn't have any experience before uh, using graphics application, they can select this light workspace and we'll simplify the UI of the application to only show the, the starting tools, the basic tools, one way of drawing a circle, one way of doing a square, etc. enough multiple options to not overwhelm the users the first time. So when you have a new student coming into a class, this enables you to have the student learn progressively the tools. We also have our, our classic workspace, which is for those who are upgrading from previous version. We have the default workspace, which I have on right now, with all the tools available in toolboxes and toolbars. And then we also provide some advanced uh, workspaces, for example, an illustration workspace or a page layout workspace, where we'll bring the tools in advance, uh, bring the tools forward that matter most for those designs. And finally, at the bottom, for those who are transitioning from an Adobe workflow, uh, you can actually also go and select the Adobe Illustrator workspace. And what we'll do at that point when you click here is we'll change the UI as much as possible to reassemble an Adobe Illustrator. Shortcut keys as much as possible, they'll be the same as an Adobe Illustrator workspace, for example. Same thing in Corel Photo Paint. Here I have, let me just create a blank document to, to do it, I'll show it to you better. Coming back in my welcome screen, you can see here I'm, for example, in a, in a Corel Photo Paint uh, workspace, in the default workspace. But if I come in my workspace selection here and select Adobe Photoshop, I'll just let it go through the paces. And you can see here that the buttons and tools have actually changed to look a lot more like what you're used to if you're using in Photoshop. The brush selection tool has changed as well so that you can have access to the tools here as if you were in Photoshop and as you're used to in that environment, helping you learn a lot faster and transition a lot faster to Corel Photo Paint from an Adobe workflow. So this is very easy. The first time you launch the application, just select the workspace you want and you'll be ready to go. Any questions so far? Don't see any questions so far, so let me continue. In addition to that, we also wanted to make sure we provide you the tools to learn Corel Draw Graphics Suite as quickly and as intuitively as possible. One of the tools you'll see here on the side, and I'm back to the default workspace, which is the one I have most used in using, is the Hint Stalker here. As I select a tool, you will see the Hint Stalker dynamically changing to explain how that tool best works, all the advanced uh, modifiers like the Shift key, Control key, and etc. So you can really learn very quickly about this tool specifically on the go. We also give you access to uh, the video tutorials, which I'm going to access here, directly from within the application. And here you can see all the different video tutorials that we have, a series of welcomes, then we have different Corel Draw introductions about the new tools in Corel Draw, how to choose them. And we also have a specific video made here for those who are transitioning over from Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop, which will go into the product itself and explaining a little bit the differences in terminology between an Adobe product and a Corel Draw product. So for example, uh, you can see here on the background that uh, adjustment layers in Photoshop are called lenses. And that short video of a few minutes will actually go through the key highlights for you, explaining those differences in terminology. The features are normally there. Some of the features are just called differently in Corel Draw or Corel Photo Paint compared to an Adobe product. So it will help you a lot to transition if you are going from one product to the other. The other thing I wanted to show you very quickly is on the MEC uh, landing page that, uh, that Nathan mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, you have access to links at the bottom here to additional information for Corel Draw Graphics Suite for training, curriculum, video tutorials, tips and tricks. If I were to go into the training section in the learning tools, you would come to this place here where you have all the learning tools available there. And then if I come into the written tutorials, for example, I get access to tons of tutorials explaining how to use a product, how to do designs. And let me go into the first one here that we actually just posted two days ago, 
Corel Draw Graphics Suite for Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop users. And again, it's about the same content as you'll see in the video itself, but here you have a written version of that so that you can read through, understand the differences, and learn about the product very quickly and become familiar with the new UI and the functionality in the product. If you are uh, looking for our curriculum, we currently have the curriculum available here with a lesson plan that enables you to use it as much as you want. You have access to all the files, all the content, all the samples, and you can edit those as much as you want for your own needs. It's a 10 lesson learning module that you can just go and use with for your designs as much as you want for your class and adapt it as far as you want uh, from there. All those are available either from the, the Corel.com slash MEC landing page or directly from Corel.com slash CorelDraw-Learning and Corel.com slash CorelDraw-Curriculum. Uh, so feel free to go there and get all the information you need. Uh, we're going to continue to provide new tutorials, new tips and tricks, and we're also refreshing the, the curriculum right now to provide even more valuable information to all of you. I mentioned the workspaces and how you can very easily adapt them and customize them to your needs and your UI and your habits. What you can see here in the user interface, if you start from a simpler UI, you can very quickly come here and quick customize them and select the tools you want or you don't want. So for example, if this is a tool you don't need in your designs or your student doesn't need, you can just disable them and they'll disappear from the toolbox, making it a very easy environment for you to teach to your students. You can even come into Customize here and have the option at this place here to come at the workspace and select Export the workspace. So you could, for example, create a custom workspace for a class that you're going to teach and really export that and make it available on all of the students' machines. Just import that workspace on all of the student machines and only the tools that you need for that class will be available to the student. So very powerful for you to provide a tailored education to your students with Corel Draw Graphics Suite. In addition to supporting and customizing the UI, we also enable you to take advantage in case you have access to them to multi-monitor and the latest generations of technology like high-resolution screens. So for example, if I wanted to have my, my welcome screen available side by side, I can just drag and drop it out and move this on a separate monitor so I can really see my, my learning tools uh, all the time here. For example, if I come here into the Need Help, I'll have access to tons of tips and tricks on how to do something. Uh, a book cover, that's not a good example here, let's find something else, uh, creating a cookbook here and explaining how to do that, getting access to all those examples directly there in just a click. I can put that on a different monitor or I could also dock it on the side very quickly so I can work on it, sorry, dock it on the side, so I can work on it side by side with my document and go through the training, the tutorials available straight out of the product. Really making it as easy for you to customize the user interface and make it for you as easy as possible for you to teach the product to the students so that you can focus not necessarily on how to use the software, but on how to create graphics and really the core of the education for the students. One of the things I mentioned earlier is also our fully integrated content library. I can come here and select Corel Connect. It's also available as an as a application in the start menu. Uh, but I'm just going to start Corel Connect here. And while it launches, just grabbing a zip of water. Corel Connect is really a complete solution that enables you to search for the content from Corel and other sources. So for example, I can search Flickr libraries, Fotolia, iStock, SkyDrive, that's my local SkyDrive, I have a file stored on my local server. And I can also search the content exchange. Here's some of the content that Corel provides. I just did a keyword search here for school, and you'll see some samples of images that you can use in your design uh, for graduates, for example, very quickly. If I want to use one of those, let me come down briefly here. Let me take the kid here. It's a lot more fun. I'm just going to drag and drop this design into Corel Draw, let it go. It's downloading that automatically for me uh, into Corel Draw, and I can use it in my designs and reposition it, rescale it, making it look perfect however I want to use it. So you have access to all that content and a lot more from Flickr and other sources directly from within Corel Connect here, uh, for example. One of the things we're doing all the time is working on, on Corel Draw Graphics Suite. I'm going to show you a little bit also of the newer things for those of you who are uh, already familiar with Corel Draw Graphics Suite. 
Uh, with this new version of X7, we're completely uh, redesigned our fills and, uh, and the patterns engine. So it's really very powerful to create some amazing fills, some amazing designs. Seamless patterns, seamless fills are very easy to do. So for example, let me try something here. I'm just going to create a two rectangle uh, shape, grabbing some colors into it, um, perhaps some yellow here. And now what I'd like to do is in this shape here, I'd like to create a fill based on these shapes here. So I can come in the object properties, select my fill, and we can very quickly and simply select new from document, drag and drop from the areas I want. When I'm happy with that size, I'll say OK and accept. And here's my fill created and ready to go. I can make this a little bit bigger. You'll see it better. And at that point, I have access to full control over all the options. I can make it, for example, uh, a quarter of an inch in size, perhaps a little too small, half an inch. And you can see that Corel Draw does the mathematics for you automatically. I can do mirroring and actually also rotate it by 25 degrees. And here is a pattern that I've created very quickly in just a few clicks. Same thing with uh, bitmap patterns. I could create a new bitmap pattern here, pick from an object or a photo I have in my document, drag and drop it, say OK. And now I've created a bitmap pattern here I can reuse in my designs. I can also choose seamless effects if I want to repeat that and give it some very unique effects on those graphics in just a few clicks. The goal here, as always, is to make the tool as easy as possible to use to, great, to create some really great and creative graphics with high quality. Page layout, I mentioned that we fully support page layout. Here's just a quick, uh, quick sample text uh, that I have. Let me move this to the side. Is the refresh, uh, I'm just looking around to my colleagues regarding the refresh to make sure that the refresh is working fine from a remote perspective. But if I create a text box here, I'm just going to create a new text box. And in that text, I could type dummy text to get started, but we can very quickly insert placeholder text so I don't need to go and do the lorem ipsum, lorem ipsum text if I wanted to. Then I can very quickly here, for example, take a picture from Connect. Let me take this photo here, move it into my graphic. It's going to download that for me from our server. And I have the capability of, for example, placing it inside this container so that I can then go and edit this, take my graphic, make it larger, but it will still only be inside the container, for example. So it gives me this control to do layouts very quickly, have connected text box. I'm not going to go into the details, but having page numbers, for example, even in odd pages support and all that is fully supporting CorelDRAW graphics suite. There's a lot of training videos on specific subjects, so I just want to give you a sense of, of all the capabilities. And uh, uh, a webinar of an hour is definitely not enough to go into all the details. Alignment as well, uh, one of the things that uh, you certainly know when you teach graphics is, is it has to be aligned properly in order to be visually appealing. And we embed tools here, if I open up my dockers on the side for align and distribute, for example, to very quickly align objects together in a very precise way. So let me take three, three squares here, drag and dropping around them. Click on Align Center, and you can see that automatically this is my reference here. You have visually indication how they align. I want to distribute them horizontally, uh, vertically, so that the width is the same on both sides. This is done in just a few clicks. We have other new, more advanced tools. For example, we can create QR codes very quickly by inserting a QR code. And because it is a graphic product, you actually have full control over this product, and you can change everything. So let's just create one here with this URL. And now I'm going to change the fill. I want to use another fill, like a fountain fill. Perhaps use a more advanced fill effect. Um, this one looks very nice. And let's see if this one works. But we also offer you the capability of validating the barcode. So if your students create a design with a barcode, they can make sure that that barcode will actually work uh, or not. It's currently validating this. And it'll tell you if this is actually readable by other devices. This one has failed because there's not enough contrast, for example. So we really want to make also sure that your, your tools you have available here enable you to make sure you can create high-quality graphics 
with a very easy way and very easy process. Graphics and colors. Uh, colors are very important when it comes to graphics. I'm just going to open here one of our dockers, which is color styles. Uh, we can very quickly create styles in just a few clicks. For example, I can create an object that I already have, drag and drop it over, and I'm going to create color styles and color palettes I can then very easily edit from within Corel Draw. So if I take this color style and palette, I can now here, for example, say, I'd like to recolor this graphic very quickly without changing everything one by one by just drag and dropping my color palettes here to the bottom. And you can see that automatically everything in this color in this car has been changed to that palette. Also very important if you want to teach color theory, you simply create a new palette here, a new color harmony. Taking that color harmony, what you'll be able to do is very quickly create a harmony based on color theory, analogous complementary, monochromatic, tetrad, triad, and then you can very quickly come into the product here, select that color, and you can see the tetrad color harmony has been created for you, uh, and you can then explain how that works during your courses. Very quickly change a color here, either control click to constrain it, uh, work on the hue, the saturation, so shift click will constrain it along this axis, make those lighter, and then use those colors in any design you want by just selecting this color and applying it here, for example. Then if this color changes again, and I take my whole harmony, change it again, put it here, automatically this color has changed as well. So it really gives you full control over everything. In that case, you can go very quickly. Text and typography is also something very important when it comes to graphic design. And Corel Draw Graphics Suite includes a very robust a typography engine uh, directly in the box uh, for both Corel Draw and Corel Photo Paint. Uh, we have here a tool where I can type here some text. I can change the font. Let's take a font that has some open type functionality. Let me take that font again. Here, I can now very quickly stretch this. And we have access to all of the information stored in the open type font when it comes to teaching typography like stylistic sets, you can very quickly do that. But more importantly, this is actually happening in real time. So if I type another character, you'll see them changing as you go uh, and as you type the text. So the user, your students, and you get direct feedback on the interacting on the effects of these stylistic sets. You have access to all the additional open type functionality like fractions, uh, like ligatures, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All this is available. If the font has this information, you can access that in Corel Draw Graphics Suite. We also include tools for you to find the right characters. If you're looking at some symbols and things like that, you can do that here. Select either the entire font or go into specific targets. For example, if you're looking at specific languages or specific symbols, for example, you can select only the symbols and you'll have access to here, for example, a right protect, a pound sign, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and all the information that is stored in that font to very quickly take this, copy, and then put it in your document wherever you want and paste it in here. I mentioned earlier Corel Photo Paint. We have a very complete photo editing application directly built in with the Corel Draw Graphics Suite that has really everything you need to do photo editing. Full support of raw, raw file formats. We support, I believe, around four or 500 different cameras today. Uh, all the latest camera raw file formats are supported directly uh, with Corel Photo Paint and Corel Draw. Uh, so if you just come here and open, you'll see just a few examples of the different file formats you support, we support here, uh, part of Corel Draw Graphics Suite. And I'll come back to compatibility, which is very important. But all the raw file formats are also supported in Corel Draw Graphics Suite directly out of the box. But the easiest way is that I do a layout, for example, I can come in a photo here, click on Edit Bitmap, and this will actually open that photo in Photo Paint for me. So I can go and edit it completely with all the power of a professional photo editing tool available at my fingertips. Here is just a sample picture I have. Tons of tools available directly here. Some of them for other applications, you would have to pay a premium for those that are available out of the box. So if I zoom in a little bit here, uh, onto the Ottawa Parliament building here uh, in, in Canada. Uh, we have, for example, the Twirl Attract and Repel tool. I can just take this, perhaps make it a little bit bigger. 
Uh, and uh, I'm just going to have fun with the Parliament building and start twirling it. Uh, we have an attract, for example, where I can attract this into uh, sync. We have a full painting capability as well with a lot of brushes and tools, so you can choose the type of painting you want to teach today. Select airbrush, choose the type of airbrush here, and you can see the effects. I'm using a mouse here, but we also have full support of Wacom tablets, for example, uh, as well as touch devices uh, if you want to go there. Let me just undo a little bit my changes and come back. Uh, we also fully support some advanced editing capabilities and masking tools. For example, we have a planner mask, a, a magic wand mask, lasso, etc. But if I take the planner mask, I can come here, make this a little bit bigger perhaps, rotate it slightly, turn the effect here. And now let's go into our effects. Tons of effects are built in, so there's no need for extra add-on plugins. You are fully compatible with Photoshop plugins as well, but if you, you already have a lot of them directly here. So let me take, for example, a bokeh blur in this case and say, okay, I like it. I have always a preview so I can see it beforehand how it's going to look. If I'm happy with it, I'll just apply it. Coming back into my default, you can see here very quickly how you can create a tilt shift photography effect, for example, here. We have full support for non-destructive photo editing with what we call lenses. Uh, so I can create, for example, um, uh, uh, gamma or desaturation, create a grayscale lens, for example. And you can see here that I'm working in grayscale. Say OK, but if I turn it on, turn it off, I'm working in non-destructive editing mode, so I can really work with, with layers and effects on graphics without impacting with all the advanced uh, functionalities you would expect from a professional photo editing application, including mail merges, uh, layer merges, and things like that, that is available there. Another thing we're adding, and we just had the request, and I think also from more uh, younger users and, uh, and, and more your students, they'll be happy to have something like that, uh, is what we call Time Machine, uh, what I would call also how to make a perfectly good photo look old and uh, completely of lower quality but enables you to give these Instagram effects, for example, if your students want to do that part of the project very quickly. But at the same time, we take the opportunity to explain a little bit what is happening behind it. So explain a little bit if, for example, if I go into an albumin technology that was used between the 1850s and 1890s, it'll explain a little bit how it was worked, how it did. So it gives at the same time a chance for you to teach the history of photography and technologies used in photography by showing examples on a modern photo and how it would have been looking like if you had done that technology back then. When I'm happy, I'm just going to save my changes to Corel Draw, close photo paint, and every effect I've applied is already here directly in my Corel Draw document. I mentioned it a few seconds ago, but Corel Draw Graphics Suite is a highly uh, compatible product. We are recognized in the industry as being the most compatible graphics software. Uh, with support of, of over 100 import-export filters, you can really open anything and save to anything. We're fully compatible with the latest versions of the Photoshop file format, the Adobe file, Illustrator file format, latest versions of PDF, EPS, DWG AutoCAD, Publisher, SVG, DocX, etc., etc., etc. You name it, we are compatible with it. Not only that, but we're also making sure that we optimize the graphics according to the output you want to go to. So if I come here into File, uh, Export For, I can choose, for example, I want to export for the web. I can go to Export for Office. So if I go Export for the web, we'll actually show you a dialog box that enables you to optimize the resolution, the formatting for the best possible file size and optimization for that website that you're going to create. So for example, do you want a low quality JPEG, etc., a GIF, a PNG? You'll see the different sizes directly how big that file is going to be, how long it's going to take, depending on the device you're using, uh, and you can get all that information here. If you want to use this same graphic in a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, come into Export for Office, and here we'll actually prepare, choose Microsoft Office or WordPerfect Office, depending on the Office suite you're using. Choose if you want compatibility so it looks the best, or if you want to be able to edit it on the other side, and then choose the different of quality of resolution you want to use, desktop printing, for example, Say OK, and this is going to create the best possible resolution and file for you to import in your presentation, for example, or Word document. 
Same thing here, access, and you can publish to PDF directly from Corel Draw. There is no need for an extra Acrobat application. You can open PDF directly in Corel Draw. If I come into open, you'll see all the file formats we support. I'm going to go into my desktop here. We support Adobe Illustrator. We support uh, CMX. We support uh, um, AutoCAD file format. Uh, just to point a few out, we support directly opening of PDF files, so you can work with PDF files you get, and a lot more support in here. But if you want to create a PDF out of this document, just select Publish to PDF. And again here, you have the options also to export it to different types of PDFs and for, uh, different types of PDF settings for the web, for pre-press, for archiving, etc. And even come into a lot more advanced options, which normally would require an Acro Acrobat professional license. Here you can choose the level of compatibility you want to go to. How do you handle color management? Do you want to put the, the author of the document? How do you want to export the text as curve? You have pre-press options. Do you want to put all the bleed marks? And we even include um, a pre-flight engine with the PDF and the printing capabilities, which will review your document and give you suggestions on how you can make sure, check out some things that are perhaps good or not good and that work better for going forward. So really having full control over that, if you go to print, same thing, and you want to print locally, uh, you have access to a full pre-flight engine as well here, just doing an analysis right now. And here again, it will do an analysis of those. Some of the images, for example, in my documents are of a low resolution, so it would be better if I change them before I export. Uh, and I always have access to a print preview here on the side, so I can really see how it's going to look when we print. Excellent. So still no questions. So as I said before, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to post them uh, through the, the chat uh, in, the, in the webinar window, uh, and we'll try to answer them as much as we can. System requirements for Corel Draw Graphics Suite. Um, Corel Draw Graphics Suite is fully compatible with Windows 7 and Windows 8, 8.1, both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. And else from that, we really have very low system requirements. And this is very important when it comes to education. You don't always have the budget to purchase the latest and greatest hardware. Uh, so we really designed Corel Draw Graphics Suite to be compatible with any machine that is capable of running reasonably well Windows 7 or Windows 8. Two gigs of RAM, you need one gigabyte of hard drive to do an installation. The screen resolution is 1,280 by 768 as a minimum. Uh, you need a DVD drive to install or a network deployment if you do that uh, over a network deployment. Uh, a mouse, a tablet, or a multi-touch screen as you want. Uh, as well as an uh, uh, internet connection for certain features. Uh, on top of that, Corel Draw Graphics Suite, especially for those who are more in the IT departments here, has full support for network deployment. So you can really prepare an image to be deployed across your whole school or organization uh, with just a few clicks of buttons and answers and questions or command lines and deploy that through whatever tool you're using, uh, SMS or whatever other deployment tool you use. Everything can be deployed very quickly. We even support deployment in multiple languages if you have students who are more Spanish native, uh, for example, and like to be able to use the software in, in Spanish or in English. You can deploy the application in multiple languages on the same machine uh, directly from, from your centralized network central. <clears throat> this gives a, a quick overview of Corel Draw Graphics Suite uh, and, and concludes my overview. I could have spent another five to ten hours just going through every single feature. But I just wanted to give you a sense of what's included and point you to the key resources for training and for learning about this product and especially helping you with the transition for those of you who today have some curriculum and materials made for Adobe Illustrator so, and Adobe Photoshop so you can see how easy it is to transition to a Corel Draw and that you have all the tools. The function is there. The tools might be called slightly differently, but with the customization and the workspaces, for example, you'll feel at home very, very quickly. You also have everything you need from the drawing tools and design tools. Tons of content comes straight out of the box that you can reuse in all your projects and all your design. Uh, very powerful photo editing capabilities, as well as the website uh, and website creation software I mentioned. Learning materials that are available. The tool will be adapting to your needs and uh, enable you to prepare either workspaces specific for a specific topic and lesson plan or uh, adapt to the level of knowledge of the students and as well as the market-leading file compatibility. 
and Corel Draw Graphics Suite is also native, available as 64-bit and 32-bit, depending on the OS you have, uh, so that we benefit from the, late, the full power of your system uh, there for you. Um, Gerard, there is a question that came in via email, and uh, Tom is wondering if there has been a head-to-head -head comparison between Corel products and Adobe. So in case you didn't hear that, I'm just going to repeat the question here uh, uh, closer to the microphone. But uh, do we have and have we done head-to-head -head comparison between uh, Adobe and um, Adobe Product Suite and, and Corel, uh, Corel Draw Graphics Suite? Um, we definitely do uh, keep a close eye internally on, on what, uh, what Adobe does. We don't have a head-to-head, feature-by-feature type document that we can provide. Um, and uh, it really, when you look at the functionality perspective, on Corel Draw Graphics Suite, uh, there is a few areas where we have more compared on Corel Draw. Uh, for example, um, we have some, some areas where you have some more functionalities than, uh, than Adobe Illustrator. Uh, in, in an Adobe environment, you, for example, if you want to really do multi-page documents, you need to, to learn and teach two applications, Adobe Illustrator and uh, Adobe InDesign, while, which are fairly significant from a, uh, from a usage perspective. While with uh, Corel Draw Graphics Suite, uh, simply uh, using um, Corel Draw enables you to do multi-page documents very quickly and intuitively. Uh, for Photo Paint, uh, I would say today we're estimating we're at 98, 99% of the functionality uh, that you would get in a, in a, in a Photoshop. Um, but uh, for most, for 99.999% for of the users, it's going to be 150% of the functionality that they'll ever need uh, from a product. And really the, the core here is that everything from a technique and a photo editing technology and technique uh, that uh, you would be teaching to your students is fully supported in Corel Photo Paint. Everything from a page layout or vector illustration perspective is fully supported in Corel Draw. The main difference is really that we have some terminology differences. And as I mentioned earlier, we have those, those training videos and tutorials that go through those terminology differences that will help you feel at home right away. And there's another question here, Gerard. Can I virtualize Corel Draw with Citrix or VMware? Um, and if so, how well does it work in virtualization? <coughs> so Corel, uh, Corel uh, allows you to virtualize from a licensing crusade and do the testing internally uh, to do virtualization, uh, either a Citrix, a VMware, or, or even uh, remote environments. Uh, we're working on that as well. Uh, we also know that, uh, for example, uh, Macintosh users uh, will have the requirement to use, if they want to use Corel Draw, they still need to have Windows on that machine. So we're fully testing as well with systems like Parallels, like Boot Camp, uh, but more importantly, Parallels in a virtualization environment. Um, there is always a slight uh, performance uh, drop because of virtualization. You're not directly running on the machine, uh, but you're running a machine in the machine. But else it really runs really great. Any, anywhere you can run Windows, Corel Draw Graphics Suite is fully compatible with it, uh, as long as you're, you have Windows running on that. So on Parallels, we do actually test internally to make sure Parallels works great uh, and it works really well on the Mac. One more question? I don't see any more. That's it for now. Mary Thanks, Gerard. Gerard, uh, thank you very much for uh, the presentation. You covered a lot of material, and it's, uh, it's definitely a, a very exciting uh, product suite, and we're uh, happy to have it available. Uh, um, Brian, if you could share with the audience uh, uh, your approach to addressing uh, um, Mac usage of Corel's products. Yes, yeah, certainly, Nathan. So Gerard just touched on uh, uh, on a bit of that, but the one thing I did want to mention, uh, you know, in that question surrounding uh, Macintosh is, um, you know, we have many support uh, many products. Some support Linux, some support Macintosh. Uh, all of them support Windows. So one of the things that we do on a regular basis is reach out to a cross section of our customers to you know, see what's important for them as we, you know, look at developing uh, new supported formats or, or new products or what have you. One of the things we recently asked them was about the requirement for Mac support. And, uh, uh, you know, further to Gerard's point, um, you know, we asked them uh, would they prefer, you know, a solution that uh, supported Mac or something that could basically kill two birds with one stone and, 
in providing a cloud-based computing solution that also supported Mac. Uh, the vast majority of which responded that they would prefer the second alternative, so you know, some type of cloud-based computing solution that supported Mac. So that's really the road we're going down right now that you know, offers more the near-term solution whereby we're working with companies such as uh, Cisco and Quest, uh, Google, Amazon to provide those types of solutions. And further to that, we have a few higher ed institutions that are uh, signed up to test this with us. Uh, universities like Wake Forest who will be testing this type of solution. So uh, near term, that really is the message we want to get across. Uh, far term or longer term, we continue to look at the market and uh, uh, as Gerard mentioned, you know, look at uh, what that holds, but near term solution is that. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for uh, addressing that. Well, that concludes uh, today's uh, presentation, and we appreciate everyone's uh, participation today. Uh, we will email you the slides. And please, uh, when you close out the presentation, a survey will pop up if you could uh, fill it out so that we can improve these webinars. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Bye.